Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over a subject that most people haven't heard of unless they follow Cletus or something. Or you're a turbo guy in general. Boost creep. Some sneakily call it free boosts. Some call it lack of control. I call it boost creep and it sucks. So we're going to go over that quick. So this is James Carroll's bike. It's on the dyno. I fired it up this morning. No oil. Hell yes. The check valve did bed in. Uh, it's running uh, phenomenally better. I put a fuel pump fuse in it because it blew the fuel pump fuse yesterday but first pull of the day it hit boost cut so this thing has a five pound spring in it you can see this line comes up cracks and then levels and then starts creeping up and up and up and up and my boost cut was at 14 it tickled 19 almost so i turned my boost cut way up you can't see it over here because it's under the non-connected and i pulled it all the way out we are creeping to 24 pounds of boost on a five pound spring. Now, what does that mean? That means this bike will make no less than 24 pounds of boost. That's a lot of boost. That's everything that bike's ever gonna have. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna push it. I'm gonna stand it up a little sooner and see if I can make the power, but let me show you how I know it's creep and not a boost controller issue. One, you can see it level out at five pounds. And two, any time that your peak torque <laughs> is the same RPM as your peak horsepower, it's creep. So it shot up the gate open and then it just started creeping and the torque kept climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing. And this, this looks like a supercharger, dude. Like, it's not a small run. I mean, we made 350. Man, I really hope Samsung uh, fixes that screw up on that update. See, my phone updated the other day, and for some reason it wants to cut off my videos all the time. So I can't do like 10 minute clips, I get like 2 minute clips, and then it shuts them off. Uh, and then when I force it to restart, it's good, so screw it. Uh, but James Carroll's bike is boost creeping like a lunatic. Now, 350 horsepower is not bad, that's pretty good, I can push a lot harder. Uh, I think we're going to push this thing all the way to 500. Uh, I don't think he'll ever use that. I think actually on gate, this thing's gonna be pretty dang fast. Uh, especially if I can get him leaving on gate, so five pounds. It'll be pretty dang fast, but I'm gonna set him up. I have five different boost modes set up. Uh, but we're getting off subject. Anyway, <laughs> boost creep. What causes boost creep? Boost creep is caused by shit turbo kit design. Okay, so a garbage turbo kit will cause a lot of creep. A good turbo kit, We'll have no creep. A turbo kit that may be slightly over-engineered can cause boost waiver or gate chatter from excess priority to the gate. So what I'm talking about with priority. You get all this water flowing down, right? If you put a hard 90 in that pipe, the water's going to shoot straight past that 90. Okay? But even worse, if you do a Y backwards against it, the water's never going to go down that Y, right? That water is your exhaust gas going through the turbo. So if you're a hard 90, like this on three kit on James Carroll's bike, figure I'll show you all what I'm talking about here. Let me, sp and where's my flash? There we go. What I'm talking about here, about the hard 90 thing. This is James Carroll's exhaust flow. It comes down here. This runner over here is not merged into that. That one isn't, and the one in the back isn't. It's literally just pulling this one runner, and it's a hard 90. So this will never properly control boost, okay? Having one runner into your wastegate is not enough. You need, in this design, these merges, it has to come off the turbo. There's no other option. You have to come in back here and weld it into the turbo back here and make that thing make a bend come out. Now, it may be something he wants to change in the future, but for now, we're just going to have a whole bunch of boost creep you're gonna have a really, really bad boost control because it cannot flow any exhaust out. Uh, that's just part of it. <laughs> Welcome to freaking cheap kits. The On3 kit is a Wish.com turbo kit. Uh, actually, they do sell them on Wish.com. Uh, so I don't highly, highly, highly don't recommend anyone get it. I do love his turbo. He's got a GT30 770, great turbo, just really shitty header. Uh, really shitty plenum, really shitty charge pipes, all that shitty, but whatever it's gonna make good power it's gonna make 500 uh but as you can see it's not a manageable 500 uh a really good kit is gonna have perfect priority you're gonna have 
dead on the gate flatlining. Now, like uh, Scott Davis, his kits, so we'll, we'll go to this. Richard's kits, I've seen a little creep here and there, but not terrible. Uh, more I see lack of efficiency out of his headers, but I haven't seen his merge header work yet. Uh, but like Scott Davis's kits, he has excess priority. So Scott Davis has phenomenal gate priority, especially when he mounts the, the gate directly on the turbo. The only issue we've ever seen with that is gate chatter. But that's only at the lower boost levels. So with nothing on the dome, there is such good flow to the gate that it is punching the gate and making it open and snap shut and open and snap shut before it hits the boost target, which is fine, but it's just something we've noticed. It's really doing absolutely nothing. You don't notice it on the bike. This you're going to notice on the bike. Creep is freaking unbelievable. That's a lot of creep. I'm, I'm not going to lie. That is a lot of creep. We are talking about 20 pounds of boost creep, which is like 18 beyond the acceptable threshold. <laughs> but it is what it is. The bike's going to be running at that power level anyway, so all the boost control is going to do is stand it up a little sooner. Uh, it'll take that nice long curve and make it more of an arch that'll flatline out at 20s. We'll see what happens here. That was a good watt run. I'm going to check the fuel targeting. Uh, I've got 80% throttle, 90% throttle, 100% throttle, and 0 through 40 done on this bike. So I have to fill the gap and uh, do power pulls up to 500. Then I have to get, I'm waiting for Ryan Schnitz to send me a pinout for his harness because he doesn't use the factory Max ECU color codes. He uses his own wire that he makes up color codes for and doesn't share. Uh, so if you get a kit from Ryan Schnitz and you want to add to it, you either have to guess and check or call him or send the harness back to get the add-on harnesses you want because the freaking color codes are not, they don't make any sense. I think he just uses random wire trimmings out of a bin. But anyway, uh, I got a wire in the laser ride height sensor, set that up so that it has its timing pulls and then once it hits a threshold i'm going to have it actually do a shift output uh once it hits like 20 inches i'm going to make it shift for him uh, and hopefully that helps because this thing's just going to continue to climb if it wheelies it's going to have to be a really aggressive timing pull because as i'm going up in rpm which it's doing as it's going down track i may be pulling timing but it's pouring in boost because of the boost creep so It'll be a very aggressive timing pull, and hopefully I can avoid the pogo bouncy bounce. But, uh, yeah, we're going good on this thing. I want to get this one tuned out today. I want to get the red one tuned out today if Dennis wakes up. I think he was up late last night working on Colt's motor. Probably screwed sleep schedule all up again. Uh, the gold bike's ready to go. Totoro's ready to go. And before the end of the day, I want to have that motor back in that freaking red Jixxer code red over there. So it can go on the dyno, and then... Tomorrow, I want Brian Dale's motor on my bench so I can start fixing bolt holes and the cases. Uh, Scotty is building a motor that you're sitting on right now, and he's going to put the rotors on Chris Charles' bike and the brake pads and calipers. I'm waiting on new lines because FedEx lost them. I'm waiting on a call from FedEx. I've called him 15,000 times. Uh, but yeah, that's what we got going on. I'm going to go ahead and post this because I've missed the last two shop updates. Uh, something I want to note, these shop updates aren't made for social media show off have fun they're made to explain to my customers what's going on just like the little facts and information like the boost creep that i put out there that's information to share with my customers uh if you're not a customer and you're loving this content thank you very much for coming and checking it out i try and share some fun content here and there but again this is primarily a communication route for my customers so they can all see what's going on without me having to send out 26 messages a day because right now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22 bikes and five more on the way this weekend. So it's a lot of phone calls to make. It is way easier for y'all to see the shop updates. Later, guys.